A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you and also those fellow worshippers in other parts of the world joining us through this live stream. I would like once again to focus this reflection on the first reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. We've been reading the, from this letter several days already until uh, next week. And uh, as I've said, one of, among the many concerns of the, uh, this letter of Paul to the Romans or to the Ephesians is, for example, today, the question of unity and peace within the community, the church. And uh, it has been a constant appeal of uh, the apostles, also uh, Paul, this concern for the unity of the community of the body of Christ that is the church that uh, every member should strive to work for this edification of the church as body of Christ and should not we should not allow division and sectarianism to uh, to influence our relationship it was an experience in the early church that there were of course like now also that uh, there are, were those who interpreted for example the teaching of Jesus or the message of Jesus differently and of course there are those who interpreted this according to their taste or to support their own agenda so uh, Paul here in the letter to the Ephesians insists on the so-called foundations of this unity in the church and uh, for example, one of the, uh, the concerns here is the, uh, the division caused by the heresies, meaning uh, a uh, misinterpretation of the doctrine or the teaching of Jesus. And this caused division within the followers of Christ. So with this, uh, Paul insists that the source of unity is not something like a legislation that uh, would assure this unity, but rather he starts with the with the presence of the Spirit. No, the presence of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus and of the Father in the community which they have experienced. In other words, he was telling them that be docile, listen to the teaching of the promptings of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus and of the Father and be aware of His presence. And uh, this, for example, part of the uh, uh, the teaching today is the insistence of uh, Paul on the importance of our doctrine, our profession of faith, which we profess as baptized. So uh, with this, it helped in the formulation later on of what we call now the creed. Now, what we uh, uh, pray every Sunday, the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed, for example. So, one of the, the sources of our unity is our 
docility, openness to the Spirit, and at the same time, adhering to the correct doctrine of the Lord Jesus. Their unity is assured now. And uh, this is a concern even now of every every generation of Christians now because we notice that uh, we bring with ourselves our own sinfulness, our own biases. And that is the problem now when we allow our capriccio our own estimation of ourselves that we are uh, on the right track that we are the correct in the correct one and we uh, we think that uh, we have the monopoly of the truth etc and we do not listen to the prompting of the spirit many times this is the cause of dissension in the community so the letter to the Ephesians insists on the unity, the unity of in our faith no, that is founded, unity that is founded in Christ, in his teaching, in the truth of Jesus Christ. That uh, he himself has called us in baptism to be part of this one church one spirit and we are gathered under a one father the father of all in other words the foundation of unity that paul is insisting is on the reality on the truth of Jesus Christ, of God, not a unity that is legislated or a kind of a, a, an accord only of individuals or groups that let us settle this, no, that up to here is your right, your privileges, etc. It's more than that. It is founded on Jesus Christ, no, in God. So we, we realize, therefore, that unity is, first and foremost, a gift from God. But it becomes a reality also when persons and communities are willing to cooperate with God and allow God to be the basis and foundation of our lives, of our decisions, when we are truly unified, united with Christ, we are truly in communion with Him. There is the source of unity. Communion with Christ flows in our communion also with one another, with our community. In the world today, there are many calls of, for unity. Let's be united here and there. I think it's a, a noble aspiration because without this, we cannot live in peace. But unity from the perspective of Christian faith is not a unity at all costs but rather the call for unity is not that is not based on truth, for example, can never be a true unity. A unity that is, a call for unity that is not based on truth, on authentic human values, of sincerity, for example, of justice, equality, then unity that unity is farce. It may turn out to be many times the call for unity as self-serving. So we ask then the Lord that 
as Christians. Our faith, our communion with Christ may lead us to work and promote true unity in our family, in our communities, in our society. This is the message of the Lord through St. Paul, especially based on his experience working with particular community like the Ephesians, the community of the Ephesians. May the Lord bless our church, our communities, our parishes, especially in this year that we are trying to, to grow in this synodality, no? to grow as and journey together as a community of brothers and sisters in Christ. May our participation again in this banquet of the body and blood of Christ be the source of our unity. Amen.